All right, so welcome back to Into the Infinity Verse, where I talk about certain aspects of the Infinity Verse, the shared fanfiction universe that my friend and uh, my friend Jason Voorhees and I work on together. And uh, this is another one I'm going to be bringing back. Uh, this is another video I'm kind of bringing back now that we have a bit more to talk about. And well, there are other things I got to keep uh, hush hush for now, but we are doing stuff. Uh, but we are doing some cool stuff. I'll say that. Um, so, yes, as you can see, it's Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja, and we did a lot with Randy Cunningham, and are going to do a lot with Randy, not just Randy, but his uh, the supporting cast. Because what's fascinating is that outside of Danny Phantom, Randy Cunningham has a really, like, rich amount of characters to really play with. Like, there's a ton of characters to really play with and really do stuff with. Like, it's not, uh, like... With a vast majority of characters, um, of side characters and and whatnot, there's enough there to really play with with others. As you know from Danny, our Danny Phantom stuff, we have uh, stuff planned for Dash. We do have stuff play, uh, planned for Dash. We've made uh, Sam, ba Sam uh, our Swamp Thing, and Valerie is like our Blade of the, of the Infinity Verse. Um, so yeah. There are, and you are, guys already know, we did stuff with Howard already. But we'll get to that in a moment. Anyway, so... Let's get, let's talk with about Randy himself. Now, for continuity's sake, this is post the end of the series. Because it doesn't look like we're getting to Season 3 anytime soon. So yes, this is the end of the series. Uh, post Season 2, the end of the Sorcerer. McFist is still around and still makes robots, but now it's more like he's not working for the sorcerer. It's more like he is more like I, you ruined my chance to be to get my superpowers and work for the sorcerer and all that. So I'm going to kill you with robots. Um, that's really been his big thing. He hasn't really had like he joined the Infinity League and is one of the seven leaders of the Infinity League. Of course, the others being Danny, Shizau, Kim Possible, Jenny, uh, Optimus Prime. And uh, Jake, Jake Long. Uh, so he is, and of course Randy himself. So he's one of the seven leaders. In fact, he's one of the. There were actually like six characters got together, and then they voted in Optimus. Uh, the he was one of the original six members, and then they vote, voted in Optimus Prime to be the seventh because like there kind of needs to be a balance. Like the seven, there needs to be seven, so like we can have an. And we won't have ties and won't be fucking deadlocked when we have to vote on shit. And Optimus was the most logical choice. <laughs> Until the Dark Phoenix stuff's happened, of course. Um, anyway. So, Randy himself is um, a little more... Um, he's a little, he's he's a lot like our Green Arrow. He's a lot. He's very much the little guy for the people. He's very anti-government. He is very anti-capitalist um, because literally his arch nemesis is a goddamn capitalist. Um, he's very very against um, like big. He's very against like um, like the idea of government of like big corporations and law and. And um, he's very against that. He's very anti-capitalist. He's very much like he like I think if oh man I remember I remember I can't remember if if uh, Jason kept this or not. But I wrote a scene where Randy just says I'm a socialist. Deal with it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Randy obviously like and that was kind of the idea with Randy was that. Of course he would have some really anti-capitalist thought, because one, he's a millennial living in this goddamn era. Well, technically Gen Zer, a Zer, excuse me. He's a Gen Z kid living in a very capitalist world, and also his arch nemesis is a goddamn is a goddamn millionaire who makes robots that kill him, and he makes and it's a guy who probably makes a lot of money from government aid. Of course he's gonna be a little he's gonna be a little anti-capitalist. Um Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, to put it blunt, uh, bluntly, he is a Bernie Sanders fan. Uh, Randy Cunningham is a Bernie Sanders fan in here. Um, any, uh, 
Uh, outside of that, Randy is all... Let's talk about the other major thing that you all probably are aware. Like, the biggest change for Randy Cunningham is his who he's with. It's not Teresa. It's not Heidi. It's it's Alia. It's it's Alia. It's Raina Rouge. Um, now, you, so let's talk about this. Why this relationship happened? Why did it happen in the Infinity Verse? Why didn't we go with you know the tried and true pairing? We are keeping you know Rose and Jake together. We didn't, but we, at the same time, and we're also keeping Kim and Ron together. But why aren't we keeping you know some of the, some other mainstay relationships like Danny and Sam? They're no longer together. Um, so why isn't Randy with Teresa? Well, the thing is, in our continuity, Randy was with Teresa, but she just couldn't deal with um, Randy constantly, like, dipping out and, you know, leaving her on dates. And he never he never could work up the courage to tell her, hey, I'm the ninja. And even then, he was like, if I tell her, then either A, she's going to freak out, B, she's going to be, like, a, a target for McFist or whoever the flying fuck comes after me. Uh... And C, it's literally going to break her every time I come home, like, I come to her house and I'm just riddled with scars and, like, I don't want to put her through the idea of I, me coming home half dead after a fight or worry her that I'm not going to come back at all. So the relationship didn't, uh, the relationship fell apart. And at that point, Randy was in, it brought into the Infinity League and sent to go recruit Ladybug and Cat Noir. Um, he also recruited the Lyoko Warriors too, but that's uh, but that's beside the point. And that's at the same time Alia had broken up with Nino. Nino in here, uh, Nino and Alia's relationship broke up because Alia was like, "We are way too like we are way moving way too fast, my dude, and the superhero life is way too stressful on both of us, and you are a little too needy. You are a li <laughs> you are just a tad too needy." So they broke up. Uh, so she broke up with him. And at that same time, Randy shows up. Uh, Randy shows up the ninja as the ninja and basically recruits the Lyoko warriors. The two hang out and become a fast relationship. Which, yeah, <laughs> it was like when I told Jason, like, "Hey, can we break up Randy and Teresa and put him, and can we break up Alia and Nino to put Randy and Alia together?" Because the reason being is that it was just so perfect to have those two together because Randy and Alia are, would work as a... And I'm not trying to make this like a crossover pairing video, but just kind of like talking about this is like... Um, the reason why it works on so many levels... Um, Alia, and it, Alia works so well because she, could, she easily grounds Randy as a, as a person and Randy does kind of need someone who can like keep him from go like from going too far and the two just complement each other like Ollie is all the brains but she's all uh, but she's also playful and can be aloof Randy's got intelligence too but he plays it like the cool guy um so the two literally were like our green arrow and black canary um, and it was just too perfect not to have those two in a relationship in this in the Infinity Verse. Besides, it's all fan fiction, really. Like, so does it really matter? Does it? Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> now, Randy, of course. Also, if you guys have been reading Dark Phoenix, Randy and Alia were dating for a while. That they were just calling themselves Ninja and Raina Rouge. Until after a fight during Dark Phoenix, where Randy, after getting his shit pushed in, took off his mask, revealed, hey, I'm, my name's Randy. She revealed her name's Alia. And now they are well aware of each other's identities. Here's the kicker, though. No one else knows that they know each other's identities. Um, even, like, Ladybug and the other Miraculous don't know that Alia revealed herself to Randy. Like, they just think... Oh, you guys are still, like, together. Uh, you guys are just together as superheroes. That, that's cute. Um, but no one at this time right now knows that Randy and Alia know each other. Like, they know each other's secret identities. Um, but, it, it, like, uh, that might change. Anyway, <laughs> no spoilers. Anyway, but however, as you guys know, if you've been keeping up with the Infinity Verse... Randy isn't the only per um, Randy isn't the only person 
who's gone through some changes in his life. Howard's kind of... Howard and Heidi have kind of gone through some changes. Howard a little more. Howard is, um, of course, Randy's best friend, and it would be kind of remiss not to do anything with him. Like, And this also ties into what happens when your main hero is away being a superhero? Who's left to protect your city? Um, and that was easy. Howard was going to step up whether he liked it or not. Because Howard... During a act of desperation, bonded with a certain Red Reaper. He is now bonded. His his mind and soul are bonded to Grell from Black Butler. Um, it was too perfect, like not to have those two together, and like kind of have it like it. It was a lot of inspiration came from like Venom, uh, the Hulk, uh, especially Immortal Hulk, um, like. Shazam, like a twisted version of Shazam. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of it did come from like, like I like the, that kind of like you turn into something else. And Grell is currently like the de facto defender of Norrisville while the ninja is away whenever he's part of the league. But there is kind of like Randy knows that Howard is Grell. Like Grell and him are one and the same. But the but how but Randy does tell him. You let him kill someone, and I will. Tr I will drop you both. Like, know very well that I will not hesitate because you crossed a line, and that's kind of the thing. Is that Howard kind of tries to keep Ra uh, like Grell in check because Grell is a homicidal maniac um, with a bloodlust to him, and Howard is not the best influence either. So it's a very complex relationship between the two. And while I really don't like the Venom movies, neither of the Venom of the two Venom movies, a lot of their like, Grell and Howard's like relationship is very much like that version of Eddie and, and Venom. Like it's very like the moment I saw that I was like the moment I saw this on screen and Jason agreed with me when he saw the movies he was like we both agreed. Yep, that's how Howard and Grell are gonna be. That's it, that version of Eddie and, and uh, Eddie and Venom. That's how. Our ver that's how Howard and Grell are in the Infinity Verse. So, um, yeah, there you go. And also, Grell um, is going to be part of his own team. We've been ki we've been kind of building that up for a little while. We've been really building that up um, for a little while. I don't. Yeah, I'm not even going to... Like, you guys probably guess what team he's going to be on. He is going to be part of our future version of the Justice League Dark team, uh, the Mystic Guard. It's been kind of been building up, and he will be a part of that. Agrell and Howard will be a part of that. But here's the thing. Howard isn't the only side character... Well, let's actually get to he Heidi real quick, because Heidi is also... Heidi is now, along with Debbie Kang, are now members of the Infinity League's PR team. Because, which is led by Kelly, who is she's our sis, twin sister. Um, Heidi uh, joined the team, and she's also dating uh, Shizau, who she's recently discovered after being kidnapped by Shizau's evil clone Shizap. He, she's figured out he's he's a dude. He's been and, and the thing is, like we talked about this before, is that Heidi in our continuity is bisexual. And she was in love with She's Out for being a woman. It's not like, oh, you're a guy, I can still work with this. It's more like, no, you fucking lied to me. There's a fucking difference. Um, and that's going to come up event like later on. Um, so yeah, but Heidi is part of that. Um, but no one knows, like, she's the only one who knows that it's really, like, She's Out's really a guy named Guy. <laughs> um, so there you go. But like I said, Howard and Heidi aren't the only, and to an extent Debbie, aren't the only ones who are going to be getting um, updates in terms of like, because the, 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 here's the thing, the Randy Cunningham, I have very little run into a show outside of like Danny Phantom or something like that, where the side character, there's so many side characters with enough character to them where you could do stuff with them. And really, like Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja's cavalcade of like characters to use um, was like it was a smorgasbord. It was like a writer's smorgasbord, really. And 
Uh, we are going to be doing stuff with two more char- with two other characters um, later on. Like we uh, we do we uh, we actually had plans for one. We had plans for one, and then recently I was like, "Hey, hey, Jason, I got an idea for uh, for another," and they are going to be tied to other franchises. I'm not going to say what franchises those are, um, but. It's going to make, like, when you see it, like, when you see it happen, it's like, oh, that's where we're going? Right on. Um, besides, if Gotham can have, like, 30 different superheroes in, like, the city, then why can't Norrisville have more? I will say that, like, if got like I said, if Gotham can have, like, 12 different characters running around Gotham simultaneously, then why can't, um... Norrisville have at least more than one hero protecting it. Especially while the ninja's away. McFist himself is also getting... Let's actually talk about McFist real quick. I don't want to make this video too long, but McFist is also... Um, while he's not part of Black Hat's supervillain society, he is now the owner of InGen. He is now the owner of... After a bidding war, he won it. But it was more to get his hands on certain projects in the in the uh, science division, and the dinosaurs themselves. He just like he doesn't care about the fucking dinosaurs on the island. He's like the uh, the the island's gone. Like I was more interested in the projects, and among those projects was a little thing called Project Indoraptor. So. Yeah, as I uh, talked about in a while back with the Jurassic Park video for the Infinity Verse, is that um, Fallen Kingdom and Do to an extent Dominion not canon. Our Jurassic Park uh, canon is on it's it stops at Jurassic World and then goes in a different direction because in our continuity, Isla Sorna is like our Savage Land, or if you want to go by DC standards. Uh, Dinosaur Island. <laughs> so anyway, so there you go, guys. That is pretty much everything so far for Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja. Hope you all enjoyed this. If you haven't already, hit the link below to my Patreon. And other than that, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.